I'm Patrick Siebert and this is Just Got Played. My co-host Brian Fiore isn't here tonight because we both decided we're running for the 2016 presidential elections. He's out on our behalf shaking babies and kissing hands. In the meantime, please join us for Just Got Replayed's Twilight Struggle. We're going back to the Cold War era. Good evening, you my know, friend. Uh, 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 Ten days ago, my report to the nation in Vietnam, I announced the decision to withdraw an additional 125,000 Americans from Vietnam. Okay, so in Twilight Struggle, you either play the United States or the Soviet Union. It's an era-based game, so it starts in 1945, I think, and then ends up right around 1989 with the fall of the, of the uh, Soviet bloc. So, in the game, you're dealt eight cards from the early war deck. There are three different decks in the game, early, mid, and late war, and all of them get shuffled. Well, not all of them, but most of them get shuffled up into the final deck at some point in the game. Each one of these cards has a special ability on it. You can play for that special ability, or it has an operations value on the top of it. The operations value are kind of like action points, sort of, and they allow you to place more influence throughout the world. Uh, the special abilities do a huge amount of things, including just outright taking a whole country. So you do have to mitigate how these play out, and sometimes you don't want to play a card, you want your opponent to play it. So you, you play it for its action points, and then get it reshuffled into the deck so maybe they'll get a chance to play it later. Each one of the countries is uh, represented by a rectangular box and the box itself is made up of two squares. One square is where you're going to put your influence for the United States, one square is where you put your influ influence for the Soviet Union. You can mitigate their, their influence, your opponent's influence, in one of two ways. One's called a coup and the other one is called a realignment role. Realignment role is basically how much influence you have in the surrounding countries, and that affects that modifies the dice roll. A coup, you essentially roll the dice, add your influence to it, that's your base number, then you double the country's stability number and add that to your opponent's influence. And the difference of those numbers is the influence that you get to leave behind. It sounds a little more complicated than it is if you actually tried it, it's pretty simple. And mathematically, it's a pretty neat way to do that kind of thing. It's pretty cool. I like that mechanic as well. Now there's a couple other little things on the board here. There's a DEFCON status. And each one of your more aggressive actions moves the DEFCON status closer to one. You don't want to be the player that actually forces the DEFCON status bar to go to global thermal nuclear war because that means you've automatically lost. But during that, each phase of the DEFCON status, like on DEFCON 4 for example, uh, no coups or alignment attempts can take place in Europe. So each one of the DEFCON statuses has a special ability, and by manipulating the DEFCON status, you can kind of protect yourself or, or not protect yourself versus, cer versus certain incidents that might happen that affect you during the course of the game. So that's another strategic little click that you can have in the course of the game. There's a required military operations track, and you have to do a certain amount of military operations during the course of the game, or you're gonna suffer some victory point losses. There's a victory point track, uh, the first player to 20 wins. It is a seesawing effect. So as I get closer to 20, you get further away from 20. And that happens during the course of the game. I'll gain some, you'll gain some, meaning, me, meaning I lose some. There's a space race track. And you can use some of your operations points towards the space race track and advance you along the space race. Those, that space race also gives you some special abilities. So you want to keep an eye on that. If you're the first one to that, the next notch in the space race track, you gain that special ability. Very, very cool aspect of the game. So in a nutshell, that's how the game's played. Now there's different scoring parts of the game. Um, your Delta card that allows you to control when an area is scored. You scored an area by how much uh, presence, domination, and control you have in the area. So uh, if you have some presence in there, you get X amount of points. If you have an overwhelming presence in that area, you get even more points. And then if you have control, you win the area. So that that's pretty neat that you can control when those are scored if you happen to be the one that's dealt that card. Now that means that the luck level's increased a little bit, but that also means your playability's increased quite a bit too. Very, very cool aspect of the game. So that is completely the game. Uh, not a lot of detail in that. There's lots of great how to play videos for Twilight Struggle and they're also going to give you a lot of tips on how to play and what to play first in order to be very competitive. And that brings my first point. This game is ultra competitive. There's a huge amount of people that love playing this game. There is a tournament 
circuit for this game that people actively compete against each other. It's number one on BGG and has been for a long, long time at the recording of this video. In fact, it was number one on BGG on our first playthrough of this game almost a year ago. So pretty incredible game, lots of depth, lots and lots of strategy. I'm reaching my second point. Um, be prepared for the game. If you're playing with someone that knows the game and knows the cards that are coming up and kind of card counts and is able to know what card's not been played and what card has been played, that's another aspect of this game. So you can get your butt romped pretty quick if you don't know what's coming up or don't know how to play the card correctly. It has great instructions. The instructions are very thorough. It's got great player aids. In fact, the instructions even give you a detail of every single card and actually what it does. So that's very, very cool for GMT to do. They're usually pretty thorough on that kind of thing. Now, the thing that I like the most about this game is it's highly history charged. It's almost all the cards deal with something that specifically happened in history. Now, it's not really a retelling of history, it's more of a reimagining of history because you have the ability to play the card and when you play the card, so it's not exactly verbatim, but it does have some educational factors and it really is cool. If you're a history buff, this game is pretty neat and I think that's one of the big reasons why people kind of gravitate towards it. Now, the thing that I had to pick out that I would like the least, it's the same thing that I think Brian and I struggled with when we first played the game. We first played the game the graphic art is extremely lackluster. I really wish that they had done more with it. Now, I do believe there is a new edition coming out for Twilight Struggle, and I think they're going to clean up the graphic art. The graphic art is very intuitive. They do a good job of making the game playable. It does have a lot of contingent rules, so all that stuff's very important, and they do a good job of that, although it is not very eye-pleasing. The art based in the game is also historical art, so... Um, black and white photos from 1945 to 1989 so it, it's not really beautiful as well but they could use some work on that on those two issues so if you enjoy games that are head-to-head -head, if you enjoy games that have lots and lots of chess like depth where you're trying to not only predict your your opponent's move but also force him to move in certain ways twilight struggle is going to be the game for you i encourage you to pick it up and play twilight struggle Thank you very much for watching. I'm Patrick for Just Got Played. Brian isn't here, unfortunately. Like I said, he's out on our campaign trail. Uh, someone should check on Brian. I, uh, um, he may have got confused when I said kissing babies and shaking hands. Can someone get him on the phone for me? Just real quick, just... What kind of production is this? <laughs>